Hi there, this is Love Johar. Thank you so much for tuning into this video and thank you so much for watching this channel. A very important video for all of you out there who want to understand about uh, what is risk, uh, what are the main uh, factors for risk management, okay? How do you recognize risk? How do you assess the impact and likelihood? And what are the different uh, strategies to manage risk? What are the different standards and frameworks that are used for risk management? What is the IT uh, risk management life cycle? Okay. Uh, what are the different phases IT uh, risk management life cycle has? Identification of risk, assessment of risk, response and mitigation and control and monitoring. All the four phases. Everything will be discussed in this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, any comments, please feel free to ask in the comment section. Uh, stay tuned in this video. Very important video for you. So let us start what is risk uh, because we should always be, uh, begin with the starting of uh, risk management. Let us try to understand what is risk. So this is a standard definition, okay, which is provided by ISACA. Uh, so please make sure that you uh, repeat the same in case of any interviews or if anybody asks you what is risk. So it's nothing but uh, the combination of the probability of an event and its consequence, okay. And these events and their consequences contain the potential for both the following threats to success and opportunities for benefit. So first of all, let us try to understand what is this uh, actually statement and what is it trying to say? Okay. So let us uh, first of all, uh, understand the later part. Two types of potentials are there. If you see the consequences and the events, one is threats to success. For example, the business objectives the business goals, the business uh, uh, critical objectives for which you are doing risk assessment. Why you are doing that? Because you want to mitigate the threats to the success of the business objectives. That is the first thing. And second thing is opportunities for benefit. There could be some benefits as well by taking a risk. For example, if you are a startup, okay, and you, you can adopt the latest AI technology easily, but sometimes uh, you do not have complete faith on the AI results. But still, since you are a startup, you can actually easily adopt AI technology because you are a nimble organization. You can easily, uh, you know, accept the new risk. So because of accepting the new risk and because of uh, you being a startup, this becomes an opportunity and it can benefit your business as well. However, if you ask a bigger organization who is already there in the business for last 50, 60 years, they would, they might hesitate. I, I'm not saying they would not consider AI at all, but they would do their own testing. They would, they would do their own, uh, you know, analysis before actually introducing AI into production. However, if you are a new startup, you can actually uh, try to, uh, you know, utilize the new technology. So hence this risk of utilizing AI for you, it becomes an opportunity. And for an older organization who is already there in the business, it might become a threat to their success as well. Okay. Because they might not adapt to the AI shift as well. So here, both potentials are there whenever we talk about risk. So try to understand that. Okay. Now coming to the definition. Definition is the combination of probability and its consequences. So what is probability? What is consequence? Probability is the likelihood and consequence is the impact. Okay. Now, now it, it makes you clear because uh, probability and consequences are sometimes not able to understood by the cybersecurity folks. So probability is nothing but the likelihood of occurrence of a risk and the consequence is the impact. What is the impact? What is the reputational impact? Is there a business impact? Is there a financial impact? Is there a operational impact? What sort of impacts are there? So I hope it makes sense now. What is risk? Clear and precise definition. Please make sure that you understand this because this is a standard definition and use the same in case of any uh, questions if somebody asks you. Okay. Now, how risk management works. Okay. And how risk management focuses on the IT risks. Okay. So first of all, you have to recognize risk. You have to make sure you understand what are the different risks which are surrounding the IT environment. Then you have to assess the impact and likelihood as we already discussed in the past uh, slide. 
then you have to develop this similar strategies to manage the risk for example you have let's say highlighted 10 risks in your risk register okay and now you have to understand who is the risk owner uh, you know what is the impact what is the likelihood and uh, i have already created different videos where you can see this in detail as well but i'll just quickly walk through this uh, on the same channel you can search risk uh, assessment made easy there is a video which has been liked by thousands of people and viewed uh, you know a lot of times so you can view, watch that video as well it will help you understanding these three parts very easily so what is the whole purpose here the whole purpose of this slide is to manage risk one thing to clear out here in the beginning itself is risk cannot be risk cannot be completely eliminated okay just make sure you understand that risk cannot be made zero there is there will always be a risk what do, what do you call that risk that risk is called as residual risk now the job of a risk practitioner the job of a risk analyst the job of a, a risk manager is to make sure that the residual risk is actually falling under the risk appetite of the organization we will discuss both these terms again later in the uh, in the slides or maybe in another video but you have to understand this very critical part risk cannot be ever be made zero okay there will always be a residual risk whatever implementation of controls you do okay now when we're talking about the controls, it comes the standards and frameworks. What sort of standards and frameworks are there? Okay. When we talk about risk. So different standards and frameworks are there. You have COBIT for risk. You have ISO 27001, my favorite one. ISO 27005, again, uh, my favorite one. Um, you know, NIST, uh, special publication 853. Uh, you can use any of these standards if you are talking about um, standards and frameworks which are being used for risk identification, risk classification, risk management, risk assessment. Everything you can perform by any of these four. So if somebody asks you in the interview, what are the different uh, standards and frameworks, you can choose uh, all four of them or you can provide in-depth detail for any one of them. That would suffice. Okay. Now coming to the main part, what is IT risk management life cycle? So every risk, okay, again, this is from the official uh, C-Risk manual uh, figure. So you have to understand this very important. Uh, so IT risk management life cycle is, plays a critical role because here, first of all, the first thing that you do is IT risk identification. Then you do risk assessment. Then you do risk response and mitigation. Then you do risk and control monitoring and reporting. So IT risk identification, what you are doing is you are facilitating IT risk identification. You are trying to identify risk for risk assessment. You are facilitating risk assessment. By risk assessment, what you are supporting, you are supporting risk mitigation because when you have assessed what are the risks, then you will, of course, mitigate them. And after mitigation, what will you do? You will actually understand whether the risks are being controlled or not. And for that, what will you do? You will do monitoring and reporting. Okay, now let us understand one by one. So identification of IT risk, very important. First step is to make sure that identification of IT risk happens. Okay, and it has to be documented in a risk register. Okay, uh, so you list all the risks and document all the risks, IT risks which you have in the environment. Make sure that you have relevant stakeholders for this. Uh, because it takes a lot of time for this particular exercise. And this particular exercise is very important from all four of the uh, life cycle phases. Okay. If this is not performed correctly, it will impact all the remaining three uh, life cycle, uh, you know, phases that you have for this management. So please make sure a humble request that this is being performed properly. Okay. Otherwise, it will be a huge mess and you will not be able to have sufficient and fruitful results and, uh, you know, benefit from the entire exercise if this is not done properly. Okay. Very important part of the uh, life cycle. So once you have identified all the risks, okay, now you uh, do the risk assessment. Okay. Now, risk assessment, as I've said already, many uh, videos are there on this channel, which uh, tell you how to do risk assessment, quantitative, qualitative, many types of uh, risk assessments are there. So make sure you watch these videos. Okay. What would you do in the risk assessment? How would you respond to the risk? How would you mitigate the risk? Okay. Now coming to the, again, response and mitigation. So response and mitigation requires management to make decisions regarding appropriate ways to respond to risk. There could be different ways. Okay. You must have been known. Transfer risk, accept risk, avoid risk, all the uh, different uh, ways of responding to the risks. Okay. 
so make sure you do that okay and put the relevant controls in place to address the risks in the response and mitigation phase now coming to the control and monitoring phase control and monitoring is the final phase of risk and control monitoring where you monitor two things very important two things you have to monitor here first is risk and second is control now what is the risk and what is the control so controls and risk both need to be monitored because you need to understand what is the current risk state after implementation of controls whether the residual risk that you are achieving falls under the risk appetite of the organization or not that i already discussed in the beginning of this video okay and if not then again you repeat the cycle okay you repeat the cycle and you understand why uh, the risk is not falling under risk appetite and you there are two options otherwise uh, you implement compensatory controls as well to make sure that the risk fall in, under the ex, uh, risk appetite for the organization and similarly you keep performing this exercise periodically because this uh, it risk management life cycle is a periodic process it should be performed at least quarterly or even at least at a minimum uh, you know once in a year for any organization you need to do that if you are a risk practitioner if you are a risk manager if you are a, a risk and compliance officer if you are a you know risk analyst you have to do this uh, at least quarterly because otherwise if you will not perform this ex exercise uh, you will not have uh, updated and relevant data okay so that is why it is very important so I hope this video makes sense to you and this uh, IT risk management life cycle is very important. Any part if you are not able to understand has been missed by you, please uh, feel free to ask me in the comment section. As always, I would be more than happy to help you. Uh, I have been helping you from last uh, eight years now and because of your support and you know uh, you know you know all your support and uh, you know uh, comments only this channel has grown to more than 10,000 subscribers now keep showering the same support and love to me uh, my friends and I'll keep on creating these videos for you so thank you so much for watching take care bye bye